Hi, I'm Sean Smith. This is Sean Smith Photos, where I edit street photography and occasional travel photos in On One Photo Raw. So uh, yesterday I went downtown to uh, meet a friend for photography, but uh, he ended up not being able to make it at the last minute. So I did a short walk by myself and I was uh, sitting across the street shooting something and then I saw this Canadian moose walking across the street, <laughs> dashed across the street, uh, and then had to run in front of him and take a couple of shots. Uh, so this is the shot that I'm going to edit today. And the effect that I'm going for here is a muted and blurred background. And this is something I came up with uh, a few months ago when I got back into photography. And I'm just going to explain how I do it. I, I don't know if there's a name for it. It's not color popping. Uh, color popping is where you make everything grayscale except for one subject or one color. So maybe I would have this moose and this guy be in color, but everything else would be black and white. That's not what I'm doing. There is a black and white filter involved in it. And we'll get to that uh, shortly. So let's get to it. All right. Um, as usual, I'm going to start off by checking out, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the camera profiles. And so we'll go landscape, landscape, portrait. Portrait looks good. A little bit washed out, but that's okay. Oh. Vivid. I like vivid because I really want to make uh, the red on the moose and the guy's jacket pop out. On one neutral, uh, camera portrait, camera standard, camera vivid. I'm going to go with on one vivid. And then let's zoom in and see if we need to do any noise reduction or sharpening. I think everything is fine. So I'm going to skip that part and I'm going to hit AI match and see what happens. Eh, that's all right. Got a little dark. Uh, let's hit AI auto. Now that's one of the things I've noticed recently is that AI auto tends to over brighten things and AI match is generally pretty good though sometimes it gets dark wish there was a button that I choose half and half <laughs> but uh let's ai match again yeah ai auto is a little bit flat but let's see let's pull back the shadows back to zero yeah that's a little bit better pull down on the midtones just a bit and reduce some haze, add some structure. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with that. And interestingly, I just noticed the shadow on the pillar here. So I may try and enhance that shadow a little bit. I'm not sure yet. All right, so let's just go in and develop the photo quickly. And so we'll hit dynamic contrast because that's usually lots of fun. And surreal, soft um, texture enhancer. Now we'll just go with natural and up the smalls, the mediums. Okay, so that that's okay there. And. Curves, do a little S curve on this thing, add some contrast, and we'll pull up the midtones a little bit. Okay, and let's turn that on and off. Okay, let's also see about maybe doing a crop. And crop out that door, it's a little distracting. And it's now clear to me this is not perfectly straight, so I'm going to hit the level 
option as well. And we'll just draw a line along this vertical. And I guess it is, I guess it is straight. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with this crop here. Let's um, let's go into locals, and we're gonna go shadow darker. Where is it? Shadows darker, and gonna get linear tool. So yeah, there we go. That that did a nice job. And close close that. Yeah, I really like how that enhanced that shadow a lot. It's a lot more obvious right there. Maybe possibly distracting. I'm not sure. Tell me what you think. Do you think that shadow is distracting? I, I think it, it's a little bit eye catching. True. But it's clearly related to the dude in the moose costume. Go Canadian moose. Uh, and back to effects. What else are we going to throw in here? I'm going to add some sunshine. No, I'm going to, you know what? Let's just go into this muted background effect. Okay, now. The muted background is something that I generally use when it's a photo I'm going to process in color and I've got a lot of distracting elements in the background that I want to hide or not hide, but draw less attention to. We want to draw attention to the subject of our focus. So, you know, we got all these people in the background here. Let's, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the blur filter and we're going to or the lens blur for filter so uh, the first thing we we'll do is grab super select and we're going to change the mode to paint out and we will click here and here right click and we're going to add a lens blur and hit done and immediately you can see that the lens blur overdoes it. Every time you add a lens blur, it's way too strong. It needs to be subtle, especially if you haven't, if you didn't get bokeh or you didn't shoot wide open. Like I was shooting, I believe at F5, uh, yeah, F5 on a micro four thirds. So there's not gonna be a lot of bokeh in this. So what, what I do here, is I reduce the amount to one and we can turn this on and off and even with one I sometimes find it's a little bit heavy-handed and what I'll do is I'll draw back on the opacity so it's around 50 and yeah I feel like maybe in this case I'm gonna go up to around 70 Yeah, so this is nice and subtle. And we've got some lens blur in the background here. And what we want to do when you're using this is you want to ensure that things that are on the same plane of focus, like the same distance, are not being affected by the lens blur. So Control M to view our mask. And we will switch the mask to black and white, I think. No, we're going to use the grayscale. We'll go back to what it was, uh, red overlay. So this whole area here, I want to mask it in. I don't want it to be fuzzy. So I'm going to get the brush key, or B for brush, and brush, and we're going to paint out. Oh, wait, I gotta change my opacity. Normally it's at 100, but I guess the last thing I edited, I had a lower opacity brush. OK, 
Okay, so some, you see here, I'm kind of selecting stuff that's all at roughly the same distance with a very soft brush. It's feathered at 100%. So that all the stuff in the foreground and at the same level as our subject stays in focus. So I'm kind of happy with that. Let's maybe up this to... Uh, up this to two. Yeah, okay. And let's turn this on and off. Yeah, all right. And then the next effect that we're going to do here is the same sort of thing. We'll grab the super select, uh, super select tool, and we're going to grab these guys and these guys, and we'll change this to paint out. And then we're going to choose the black and white filter. And hit done. And so we've got our mask created around these guys here. And we might need to clean it up in here. So I'm going to zoom in. Uh, where's the. And let's get the perfect brush. And. Oops. There we go. All right, so that's color popping, where these two guys are like that. I do not like this. It's unnatural. But what I do like is reducing the saturation about 10% on the background. So here we go. There it is. On off on it's very subtle maybe this photo will go with 20 percent opacity yeah so this kind of dulls the background and it ensures that your subject is much more visible or more of the focus yeah i'm going to go with uh 15 in this case and Another way that I've done this before we had perfect masking and is just using a masking bug and doing the same thing. So I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to add another black and white filter. Oh, no, you know what? We'll do this a little differently. This time we'll go into locals and I will add an adjustment here and we will reset the exposure and we will put the saturation at minus 75 to start and so what i would do is i would get the masking bug and i would choose strong vignette or vignette and I would drop it here and we'll rotate this. Oops, we'll rotate this. And adjust the shape as needed to kind of get it nice and tight around our subjects. And a nice big wide feather. So if you don't have on one photo raw 2023 with the super select and you don't want to do like crazy masking, you could just put a vignette kind of thing around it. And then now that I can see by going like this that it's working, what I would do is I would pull the saturation back up. And 
minus 12 or so, and we can see that the background is much more faded than it was before. Although I much prefer the new way using the super select because then I can just select the two subjects in this case and we'll go back to effects and turn that back on and there it is. And the last thing I'm going to do is, whoops, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a vignette and a big softy. I'll probably pull back on the opacity on that a little bit. And the big softy will further draw our eyes towards these big red people. And that is the edit, the muted background with lens blur. And the, the key with the lens blur is that you really need to drop it down to one or two and maybe even pull back on the opacity a bit because I find it's the default that it drops in is really heavy handed and looks fake. In this case, it looks a lot better. Uh, in any case, if you like this video, uh, please like or subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Vero, Instagram, or on my website. Links are below. P please let me know if you found this useful or if you use a, a similar or other effect to create or draw the focus of the eye towards your subject. See you in the next video.